Hi, my name is Kathleen Judge, and I'm one of the clinical nurse specialists at Stanford in the Diabetes Clinic in the Endocrinology Division. And today I'd like to talk about three things that affect blood sugars, foods, med, meds, and stress. First thing, let's talk about foods and healthy eating. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about foods that really impact the blood sugars more than others. Foods, when we think about foods, we're really gonna place them in three categories, our carbohydrates, our proteins, and our fats. As you all know, it's carbohydrates that are the ones that are gonna really impact the blood sugar. The proteins and the fats really not gonna have too much impact on the blood sugar, but that's why it's important to combine these foods together so that you feel satiated and the blood sugars are raised a little, but they're not, they haven't gone, they haven't gone too above goal because you've combined them with other foods that make you feel full, make you feel satisfied and don't impact the blood sugars too much. So as, as we're thinking of um, carbohydrates, I know you're probably thinking of a few carbohydrates off the top of your head. I'd like to list them out for them for you. When we think about carbohydrates, We've got our breads, we've got our pastas, we've got our potatoes, peas, corn, winter squash, beans, fruits, uh, dairy products, milk, yogurt, um, and then our, our really simple carbohydrates, foods with just simple, fast carbs, sweetened beverages, desserts, um, honey, sugar. All these foods are under the category of carbohydrates. These foods really impact the blood sugars by raising them. So, and there are times when we just need straight carbohydrates because our blood sugars are on the lower side. Majority of time, we would like to keep our blood sugars in, well, we'll go over that in a second. We'll go over what our blood sugar ranges should be. But really the key is, if we were to go back to the other slide, we really want a food, we really want to choose meals that kind of look like the upper picture, uh, that one of the upper pictures in this slide, the choose my plate uh, picture that is really a balanced meal. You've got a little bit of carbohydrate there with the roll. You've got your vegetables to make you feel full, and then you've got the protein. The next slide I would like to go over are the medications. And this busy slide really is just meant to show that not all medications are created equal. Medications are for diabetes are meant to, are meant to lower blood sugars. However, every medication is going to basically work, may work on a different area in the body. The, 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 the response that we'd like to elicit, of course, is lower blood sugars, but it, every medication is going to do it in a different way. So that's really what this slide is meant to say, is, um, is that the blood sugar, the, the medications that you might be on are going to lower blood sugars, but they might, certain medications are going to do it than other medications. And our job with in clinic is to really Make sure that the medication that you're on works best for you and keeps your blood sugar in the range that your provider would like. And how you, we will manage some of these medications is really by monitoring our blood sugars. Monitoring our blood sugar usually involves poking our finger or using a continuous glucose monitoring device to check blood sugars at various times of the day. We have a scale, we have a, we have a range, a before meal range and an after meal range. And before meals, we'd like blood sugars between 80 and 130. Two hours post meal, we'd like one uh, less than 180. And then before bed, anywhere between eh, 100 to 150, depending on the medication that you might be on. So our job with monitoring when you come to see one of your providers is we look at the, how some of your blood sugars are, and then we might adjust some of the medications based on what your numbers are doing. We might adjust the medications or we might adjust the food, the carbohydrate in the meal plan, because again, we're trying to get back to some of these goals that we have written on this slide. The things that we're gonna, we wanna avoid when we're um, adjusting foods or adjusting medications is two extremes. We'd like to avoid low blood sugars, and we'd like to avoid high blood sugars. Low blood sugars really are a whole host of symptoms that really does not make you feel very good. You And we'll go over those in a second. But we're really in... In, 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 in dealing with diabetes, we really want to prevent the low blood sugars. We want to prevent the highs too, but we also really want to go over the lows. And how we do that is we monitor the blood sugar. 
We have regular meals because as much as possible, we'd like to keep our meals on track because then your timing of your medications will also be um, on track. But we are going to bring some sort of candy or sweet with us in case the blood sugars start to go low. We have something there to raise up the blood sugars. How do we feel when the blood sugars are low? These are some of the symptoms, and I hope no one has ever felt this way. What's defined as a low blood sugar, blood sugars less than 70. A lot of people, though, feel low blood sugars when the blood sugars are less than 80. And these are some of the symptoms, shaky, sweaty, dizzy. But we still are going to recommend, if you have any of these symptoms, check your blood sugar. It might be low, but it also could be high. And High blood sugars are, are when there's too much blood sugar in the, in, in the blood. Hypo blood sugar, hypoglycemia is when there's too little, but this is when there's too much uh, blood sugar in, the, in, in uh, too much sugar in the blood. And those symptoms are also very uncomfortable. Uh, you might be hungry, you might be sleepy, you might be, uh, you might have blurry vision. Usually this is when you have blurry vision, it's usually, you know, blood sugars higher for a longer period of time. But that being said, the most important thing you can do, or one of the most important things you can do is check your blood sugar to make sure you're more or less in range. The last thing I'd like to talk about is stress management. And the we, we can't emphasize enough that if there's stress, blood sugars are oftentimes higher. So the things we really wanna focus on is what to do when, when you're feeling more stressed. We want you to bring your team in, in, in and make us a part uh, involved in, in, in helping reduce the stress. Uh, your diabetes educator, your doctor, your endocrinologist, all of us are here to help reduce the stress. We don't want you to strive for perfection. Making small achievable goals is really the key step um, because you're gonna see us often. And so we, little by little, we'll make these changes together. And connect with and connect. We will be connecting with you in the visits, and we'll also be giving you access to resources that also will help uh, with stress management. Connecting with the American Diabetes Association, connecting with some of our wellness groups that we have every month at Stanford. So there's a whole host of things we when you're in in visits, whether you're at visits at Stanford or whether you're in in classes, we're going to be talking about all these things: foods, meds stress managing, monitoring your blood sugars. In summary, it takes a lot to manage your blood sugars and, and, and diabetes. It's going to take time and practice. And we're here to help, um, to help you on this journey in controlling your blood sugars. Our goals are to help you eat healthy. We're going to encourage physical activity to the degree you can. We're going to go over the medications so that you feel safe when you're taking those medications. We're going to strongly review the importance of monitoring your blood sugars. We're going to solve problems confidently together. We're hopefully going to reduce the risk of diabetes complications, and we're going to learn to cope with the changes that are needed to make, the di make your diabetes journey successful. Thank you so much for spending these few minutes with me today. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.